Hello, let us paint together. I am going to paint a winter tree kind of scene. Um, I have sketched out what I'm going for. This is a very rough sketch, but um, the sun is coming up and then this is all snow and it looks sort of yellow because of the sunlight. And then the shadows are kind of purplish-ish. And then the background, it's, you know, a forest of trees. They're all kind of purplish, whitish um, because they have snow on them. So that is what I'm gonna be working from. I'm gonna put that over to the side. And then um, here's my palette, which I'm just not gonna keep in view. I do have a free um, supply list and a free like how to set up your palette kind of resource that I'll link to below. And I also have a free color mixing class. So if you're interested in any of that, just check the links. But I'm gonna be using a lot of like, this is my Naples yellow. I think this is whatever this is, my like medium yellow. And then probably, um, probably a lot of my periwinkle and maybe some sky blue. Um, you know, even though it's a winter scene, there's not really any white in it per se because uh, just of the time of day and the, the way the sun um, is reflecting. And then I have my two waters over here and I'll be using either my size 12, that's this one, or my size six round brushes. They're both Princeton Heritage. This is the, now that I found these, it's the only kind of brush I will use. So um, I will be starting with, look, there's, <laughs> I've already gotten something up here. Who knows what it is? I am going, and so, oh, so this is a five by seven. I have a larger 10 by 14 pad, but I've divided it into four sections um, because I've been working with the smaller size because one, smaller paintings are affordable, so it's easier for me to sell them. And I scan them mostly to either like licenses, cards, um, I, so I, a small size works for me. So I'm doing a five by seven. You could do this as like a nine by 12 or any other um, vertical orientation like that. So I'm just gonna mix over here. I just want a really, really light, very light yellow. So I'm adding a lot of water to some Naples yellow and I might add a little bit of my mid medium yellow but mostly I'm just loading up my brush over here with water and then getting a touch of color. And from looking at my guide photo, it looks like it's a little bit above the halfway mark, but you could, do, you could do it either way. You could do it right in the middle. You could do it however you wish. I'm just gonna kind of go. So I'm gonna paint across vertically. I usually leave a little bit of a white edge, so I actually over here will not go all the way to the edge, which you can if you want to. Usually, if so I'm using a watercolor block right now, so it's um, attached on all sides so it doesn't buckle, but if you're using just regular watercolor paper, you may want to use some um, masking tape and tape down the sides, which will also give you that white edge. And the reason you would want to do that is to keep it from buckling too much. There are, the internet will tell you like you have to soak your paper first and then stretch it and use this special tape but I don't, I don't buy any of that <laughs> I do like using a watercolor block though just because it's already attached and I don't have to deal with any of that so I'm gonna go all the way close to the bottom here um that's right around the halfway point yeah I'm pretty happy with that and then so I'm going to want to do more here, but if I do it right now, it'll bleed into it and I don't want that. So I think I'm gonna work um, on the sky and then eventually get down to that. So I'm gonna be mixing some periwinkle with some, um, just like a dark purple, like a dioxazine, if I'm saying that correctly, purple. Just mixing like every blue and purple in my palette because the top of the sky was a little darker, you know, because it's the sun has not come up yet. And you can see that some of the sky here, that's what that's supposed to represent. You can see it through the trees. So I'm probably not going to do the whole sky because I'm going to take some of, I, I took the color off my brush and, and um, wet my brush because I don't want this to be overpoweringly dark. So I'm gonna be painting over this, but I don't want it to be too dark anywhere else because I wanna do the trees over it. So I'm kind of cleaning off my brush and adding water. And I guess I'll just do a light wash here. And I, those two areas that are darker are fine because the trees aren't gonna to touch those.
and then is this dry yet? That's not quite dry, so I do not want this to touch. So I'm gonna leave that like so. And just give it a minute to dry. It's actually pretty dry now. And then I want a little bit more of an intense yellow and I do want it to bleed up. So I'm gonna use the wet paint in the wet right here so it will go up a bit. And then down here, I'm gonna just bring it down. Just so that, so that's kind of like the horizon there, which will be behind the trees. And I just, I stopped talking. The, it's not that the sound stopped working. I stopped talking because I was trying to think about the placement of the sun. Um, I guess I'm going to use my darkest yellow. What's the name of it? I don't know. Dark yellow. <laughs> and I'm just going to sort of indicate like where the sun is because you definitely see it through the trees. I may cheat though. I say cheat. I like to use bleed proof white with my watercolor paintings, even though it's not a, a watercolor. <laughs> Um, a lot of people use masking fluid to keep an area white. I don't do that. I don't, I don't want to. Like I said, I do what I want to do. My paintings, my rules. I don't feel beholden to any standard. So this is my bleed proof white. If you don't have a bleed proof white, you could just leave the sun like this. I'm just trying to make it look, you know, like, you know how bright the sun is. Like you can't, like it is almost white. And I want it to be kind of fanning out in several directions. In case you're worried that other everyone else knows what they're doing with art or other things, don't worry. They don't. Okay, some people do. Sometimes I do. I'm going to leave this all right like this. I'm going to turn this off. This will be part one um, and then come back for part two because I need this to all be completely dry before I continue. Okay, let's do it. So we need a brown color to do the trees. I have several browns, or at least a couple, in my palette. If you do not have any browns, you can make eight browns by mixing, um, I'm, my words are not working, like opposite colors on the color wheel. Complementary colors? <laughs> opposite colors. Um, so like purple and yellow, or um, green and red, um, basically like, just mix a bunch of colors together and you'll make a brown. I do have a free color mixing class. I already said that. I'm using some browns and I will probably add like some other things to it to change the tone a bit. Like each of those color combos I just mentioned would make a different tone of brown. I'm just gonna assume you have some brown in or gray or something in your in your palette. And this is my reference sketch. So there are several trees. I'm gonna do the trees first and then add the shadows. And I can see that like, I was expecting to see sky up here. So I'm gonna have the trees go from down here to up there. And there's some possibly wet paint nearby so I can't rest my hand. Is this stuff dry over here? You can't see it. It'll be a surprise. Okay. All right, I think, I think it's safe. I hope it's safe because I do like to anchor my hand. So I'm gonna start from like down here and just try to do one thin stroke all the way up. And I know that you could see the sun, so I don't wanna to go too much over the sun. I'm gonna go a little bit over the sun. I'm gonna imagine here's another tree branch right here. And then can see from my sketch that I've got kind of another stand of stand of trees, <laughs> stand of trees. Why? What is that sound? I don't know what that sound is. We'll assume it's my husband. My husband has. Well, I shouldn't say it's just my husband. We would like a back patio, and my husband, who is not a landscaper. <laughs> 
um, has decided he's going to build it himself. And he kept acting like he was going to wait and think about it, but like once he gets it in his head. This man, I don't know how he will ever retire because he cannot sit still. Um, so you may hear some rumbling, like that's the wheelbarrow. So he's moving a bunch of stuff. So the back patio will be right against the house where my my studio is in the sunroom off of our kitchen in the back of the house. And um, the patio would come off of that. So he, okay, so I'm just continuing to anchor. I, I'm just, I don't know how many of these I'm going to make. We're going to be doing shadows here across the, I was going to say lawn, but like the foreground. Um and I don't know, I'm just going to do several of these and then I'm going to add, uh, I can't paint and talk at the same time. My brain doesn't work when I paint, not in that way. We're going to add leaves and foliage, just really big clumps of purples and stuff later. But, um, so I don't know, just, just swoop up, swoop up, make some relatively thin lines. Don't worry about it too much. Some of it will be covered. Oh, I feel like I'm hearing weird things. Okay. We can push down harder or use a larger brush to get thicker strokes. And just use the tip if you want some thinner trees. Uh, can we put one right here? And get some more. Load up my brush a bit more. Get. Oh, I can hear a horse. We have horses next door. And I can hear them going, <laughs> but I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's a sound that makes me happy. I feel so lucky. I always loved horses growing up. Now my daughter loves horses. It's so nice to have some. They, they don't live next to us in the winter. They come for the sort of spring, summer, and fall. It's a bunch of brood mares and one stallion. So we get to see, <laughs> we get to see lots of um, nature happening, if you know what I mean. But you know, easy to explain to a child when they can see animals doing it. All right, there's my trees. I need those to dry completely before I can do the leaves. Uh, so there were also a few sections of kind of purple shadow areas that I'm gonna add or like periwinkle because this is supposed to be like really early morning there are some shadows in the in the snow and we're gonna add purple shadows down too once they dry but I'm just gonna put a few like kind of dark areas here and there just sort of scattered about because the snow is not gonna be perfectly um like flat it could be I don't want to go too, I don't want to do too much. I'm going to stop. There's my shadows. It's kind of hard to see, but you saw me paint the really light yellow. Okay. So that's part two and a half. And again, I need it to all completely dry. Um, because I'm going to be doing the shadows. Maybe these are dry enough that it's, maybe I can do it. All right, let's, let's go for it. I'm just going to use straight up periwinkle. If you don't have a periwinkle, you could, um, water down like a just a regular old purple I would probably add if you have like a light blue add that to it to you because it's kind of a bluish purple color it is really great for snow um okay so the sun is coming from here and the tree shadows will would be it's kind of like a vanishing point if you've ever done a vanishing point like all of the 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 point of light is there so all of the shadows will be going out essentially like and they'll kind of go like these will be closer to parallel and then they'll sort of go out like that because of where the sun is. So I'm just going to get close here and make this like so and this like so. Nothing needs to be perfect. <laughs> And then this one will be more like that. And this one would be like slightly more angled this way. Just because 
again at the angle of that sun. I'm not trying to get too crazy though. This is, we'll just assume we'll go more off this way. Kind of like that. And we'll do the same thing in here. This will be a little bit more angled. Can you hear? Can you hear the digging? Can you hear the digging? There you go. So, got a nice shadow thing going and then I'm gonna call these good enough. So now we want to do the foliage, which I'm gonna start with all periwinkle and then maybe go back and add some other colors. And all I'm doing is taking my round brush and sort of tapping around. I may switch to my size 12. This is my size uh, six if I want. And I, I'm gonna add more water and so this do a little bit lighter. I don't want to cover up that sun all the way. I may do some areas darker. Singing the songs of angry men. I used to know all the words to, the, to all of the Les Mis songs, but apparently not anymore. Feel the beating of your heart, echo the beating of the drum. When morrow comes. Basically, I don't want it to all be one exact color, so adding water to your watercolors will make them lighter. Oh, listen to the shoveling. And um, adding a darker. So the less water you use, the, the more opaque the color will be. And then if you actually want it to be darker, you could add like a darker purple. I've kind of added a little bit of like a dark blue. I'm gonna add a few dots of that here and there for some variety. Over here I'm mixing. Again, just want a variety to give it some depth. And also maybe, oh, and I just, look what I did. I just put my wrist right into that. Don't do as I do. You could be more patient than I. That would help probably. This seems to be the only thing I really messed up. I'm just gonna go like this. Okay, let me go back to adding some darks. I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of it this time. leaving that sun open to shine through. touch of my bleed proof white right there and then the center just so it's sort of the brightest focal point there and I'm just going to continue layering some different shades of blues and purples I don't want anything to be too dark maybe just in a few sections here and there just makes it look a little more realistic and have lots of different tones and then I'm just using my straight up periwinkle again and I'm gonna add how 
little more dark here at the top. And I'm just working all wet, wet on wet, letting everything kind of blend together. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, let's do it. So we need a brown color to do the trees. I have several browns, or at least a couple, in my palette. If you do not have any browns, you can make eight browns by mixing, um, I'm, my words are not working, like opposite colors on the color wheel. Complementary colors? <laughs> opposite colors. Um, so like purple and yellow, or um, green and red. Um, basically, like, just mix a bunch of colors together and you'll make a brown. I do have a free color mixing class. I already said that. I'm using some browns and I will probably add like some other things to it to change the tone a bit. Like each of those color combos I just mentioned would make a different tone of brown. I'm just gonna assume you have some brown in or gray or something in your, in your palette. And this is my reference sketch. So there are several trees. I'm gonna do the trees first and then add the shadows. And I can see that like, I was expecting to see sky up here. So I'm gonna have the trees go from down here to up there and there's some possibly wet paint nearby so I can't rest my hand. Is this stuff dry over here? You can't see it. It'll be a surprise. Okay. All right, I think, I think it's safe. I hope it's safe. Because I do like to anchor my hand, so I'm going to start from like down here and just try to do one thin stroke all the way up. And I know that you could see the sun, so I don't want to go too much over the sun. I'm going to go a little bit over the sun. I'm going to imagine here's another tree branch right here. And then... Can see from my sketch that I've got kind of another stand of stru stand of trees, <laughs> stand of trees. Why? What is that sound? I don't know what that sound is. We'll assume it's my husband. My husband has. Well, I shouldn't say it's just my husband. We would like a back patio. And my husband, who is not a landscaper, <laughs> um has decided he's going to build it himself. And he kept acting like he was gonna wait and think about it, but like once he gets it in his head. This man, I don't know how he will ever retire because he cannot sit still. Um, so you may hear some rumbling, like that's the wheelbarrow. So he's moving a bunch of stuff. So the back patio will be right against the house where my, my studio is in the sunroom off of our kitchen in the back of the house. And, um, the patio would come off of that so he okay so I'm just continuing to anchor I, I'm just I don't know how many of these I'm going to make we're going to be doing shadows here across the I was going to say lawn but like the foreground um and I don't know I'm just going to do several of these and then I'm going to add uh I can't paint and talk at the same time my brain doesn't work when I paint not in that way we're gonna add leaves and foliage, just really big clumps of purples and stuff later. But, um, so I don't know, just, just swoop up, swoop up, make some relatively thin lines. Don't worry about it too much. Some of it will be covered. Oh, oh I feel like I'm hearing weird things. Okay. You can push down harder or use a larger brush to get thicker strokes and just use the tip if you want some thinner trees. Uh, I'm gonna put one right here. I'll get some more, load up my brush a bit more. Get, oh, I can hear a horse. We have horses next door and I can hear them going, <laughs> but I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's a sound that makes me happy. I feel so lucky. 
I always loved horses growing up. Now my daughter loves horses. It's so nice to have some. They they don't live next to us in the winter. They come for the sort of spring, summer, and fall. It's a bunch of brood mares and one stallion. So we get to see <laughs> we get to see lots of um, nature happening, if you know what I mean. But you know, easy to explain to a child when they can see animals doing it. All right, there's my trees. I need those to dry completely before I can do the leaves. Uh, so there were also a few sections of kind of purple shadow areas that I'm going to add, or like periwinkle, because this is supposed to be like really early morning. There are some shadows in the in the snow and we're gonna add purple shadows down too once they dry but I'm just gonna put a few like kind of dark areas here and there just sort of scattered about because the snow is not gonna be perfectly um like flat it could be but all right I don't want to go too I don't want to do too much I'm gonna stop there's my shadows it's kind of hard to see but you saw me paint the really light yellow okay so that's part two and a half. And again, I need it to all completely dry um, because I'm going to be doing the shadows. Maybe these are dry enough that it's, maybe I can do it. All right, let's 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 go for it. I'm just going to use straight up periwinkle. If you don't have a periwinkle, you could um, water down like a just a regular old purple. I would probably add, if you have like a light blue, add that to it to because it's kind of a bluish purple color it is really great for snow um okay so the sun is coming from here and the tree shadows will would be it's kind of like a vanishing point if you've ever done a vanishing point like all of the 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 point of light is there so all of the shadows will be going out essentially like and they'll kind of go like these will be closer to parallel and then they'll sort of go out like that because of where the sun is. So I'm just going to get close here and make this like so and this like so. Nothing needs to be perfect. And then this one will be more like that. And this one would be like slightly more angled this way. Just because, again, of the angle of that sun. I'm not trying to get too crazy though. This one we'll just assume we'll go more off this way. Kind of like that. We'll do the same thing here. This will be a little bit more angled. Can you hear? Can you hear the digging? Can you hear the digging? There you go. So, got a nice shadow thing go in and then I'm going to call these good enough. So now we want to do the foliage, which I'm going to start with all periwinkle and then maybe go back and add some other colors. And all I'm doing is taking my round brush and sort of tapping around. I may switch to my size 12. This is my size, uh, six. If I want, and I I'm going to add more water. And so this I'm going to do a little bit lighter. I don't want to cover up that sun all the way. I may do some areas darker. Singing the songs of angry men. I used to know all the words to, the, to all of the Les Mis songs, but apparently not anymore. Feel the beating of your heart, echo the beating of the drum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when morrow comes, 
<laughs> Basically, I don't want it to all be one exact color. So adding water to your watercolors will make them lighter. Oh, listen to the shoveling. And um, adding a darker... So the less water you use, the, the more opaque the color will be. And then if you actually want it to be darker, you could add like a darker purple. I've kind of added a little bit of like a dark blue. I'm gonna add a few dots of that here and there for some variety. Over here I'm mixing. Again, just want a variety to give it some depth. And also maybe, oh, and I just, look what I did. I just put my wrist right into that. Don't do as I do. You could be more patient than I. That would help probably. This seems to be the only thing I really messed up. I'm just gonna go like this. Okay, let me go back to adding some darks. I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of it this time. leaving that sun open to shine through. touch of my bleed proof white right there and then the center just so it's sort of the brightest focal point there and I'm just going to continue layering some different shades of blues and purples I don't want anything to be too dark maybe just in a few sections here and there just makes it look a little more realistic and you have lots of different tones and then I'm just using my straight up periwinkle again and I'm gonna add a little more dark here at the top and I'm just working all wet wet on wet Letting everything kind of blend together. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. I hope you enjoyed this.